I remember my symptoms kind of escalating at this point. Welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me already, my name is Kendra. I do all kinds of different things on my channel, including story times, art, editing tips, different things like that. So if you are interested, um, check out my other playlists and subscribe. Go ahead and like this video, leave a comment, all the things. Today, I wanted to get into my two week weight symptoms the month that I was pregnant. If you don't know, we actually had an early miscarriage in my previous pregnancy. I was about seven weeks along and um, we are planning to try to conceive again for our rainbow baby and these are some of the symptoms that I'm going to be looking out for during our next two week wait. So I want to go ahead and kind of get into a more concise layout by DPO of my symptoms the month that I was pregnant so let's go ahead so and get into it. I do want to mention that I got my IUD out on June 7th of 2022 and I actually never had my cycle return. I never got my period back after that. I immediately got pregnant. So this may be a little bit off for those of you who are trying to conceive and have already had a cycle or are in a different situation from me. But I wanna go over some of my weird pregnancy symptoms and some of the ones that were kind of on track with other two week wait videos that I've seen on YouTube. Like I said, I do out on June 7th. I had a little bit of withdrawal bleeding starting on the 9th and that continued until the 12th. So I kind of considered that in my app as a period because my app didn't have an option to do like withdrawal bleeding or anything like that. So Kind of just to track it so that i could see what was going on i considered that a period and then i had a little bit of an lh peak on the 18th which would have been like a week and four days after my iud was taken out i think the lh ratio was like 0.5 or something uh, which was the highest one that I gotten which I thought was going to be triggering ovulation but it actually was not um, I actually got an LH peak on the 24th so June 24th was a Friday so then I considered the next day June 25th to be ovulation day and my LH was high on that day too but it wasn't as high as the 24th so the 26th I considered to be one DPO my symptoms were acne headache bloating diarrhea and gassy. All of those were moderate except for the headache which I labeled as mild uh, and then my moods were happy calm and focused. So I kind of remember like at this time being like super focused on my work like go 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 getting everything done. Very productive on this day. It's considering this to be two weeks three days into my pregnancy but I know that that's not accurate given that I just guessed about when my period was which it wasn't even a period so moving on to the 27th which would have been two DPO my symptoms were a mild backache mild fatigue moderate headache sore breasts mild mild constipation mild cravings and mild appetite increase and a little bit of pelvic pain and of course if you want to see like a day by day vlog style video recording my two week wait i do have a video of that up on my channel already so you can kind of see like what was going on on each day but i wanted to let you guys know that there is a video of that i kind of just wanted to do like a more concise analogy of my two week wait symptoms so moving on to the 28th this would have been three dpo my symptoms were mild fatigue mild headache mild sore breasts mild diarrhea and mild gassy and i was very tired on this day so i know it's too early for implantation at 3 dpo but this is kind of just what i was feeling and some of these symptoms i was like wasn't fast to assume were early pregnancy symptoms i was more contributing them to early pms considering this would have been my first period in six years over six years for me if i had had my period this month or in july so that's kind of what I was contributing a lot of this stuff to, but the sore breast thing was like very early. And I remember in my vlog kind of being like, I remember it kind of being a PMS symptom for me, but it was kind of weird the way it progressed. Like it was more in the, more so in the bottom of my breasts. And then it kind of progressed into an all over sensation. So that was a little bit odd for me. For DPO on the 29th, my symptoms were mild fatigue, mild sore breasts, mild cramps, and a mild appetite increase, and my moods were calm. So 
July 30th would have been five DPO. My symptoms were mild fatigue, mild headache, mild sore breasts, mild cramping, mild moderate bloating, and mild appetite increase. My moods were calm, tired, and irritable. So I did a vlog on this day, I think. Six DPO would have been July 1st, and I remember this day because Stranger Things part two of, I think it's season four or five came out, and I was really excited to go home and watch it. So that's what I plan on doing the entire afternoon of Friday, July 1st. So that is what I did, and I also logged my symptoms. So I had mild fatigue, mild headache, mild sore breasts, mild cramping, mild bloating, and a mild appetite increase. My moods were angry, weepy, tearful, irritable, and anxious because my I think my friend was in town and there was like a whole bunch of like chaotic things going on and I was like super overstimulated and all I wanted to do was like go home and like sleep because I was super tired and like lay down and watch my show. <laughs> Let's see, Saturday, July 2nd, I was seven DPO. I remember my symptoms kind of escalating at this point and I do have some notes here where it kind of like my symptoms escalate and I wanted to elaborate on the symptoms I was feeling. So I had a mild headache. I had a lot of headaches throughout my two week wait. I had a mild headache, mild nausea, mild sore breasts, mild cramping, mild bloating, and a mild ap appetite increase. My moods were angry, tearful, tired, irritable. My notes were I was really thirsty around 12.45 in the morning as I was editing. Like I ended up drinking, I think like three consecutive bottles of water and a can of tea. And my cans of tea are this size. <laughs> so it was really odd for me to be so thirsty out of nowhere and like drink so much fluid while I was editing. I also noted that I was really out of breath going up and down the stairs. Like just going up and down the stairs would take the breath out of me. And I was recovering from COVID at this point, but my shortness of breath symptom from COVID had already gone away. So it was a little bit weird. Slight congestion in my left nostril and lots of mucus beginning last night when I laid down. Congestion lingered all day, sneezing a lot. So this was the beginning of like my pregnancy congestion and my allergy to the cats. And I was only one week DPO at this point. And I remember like laying down and just, I had just recovered from COVID and had both my nostrils clear and was able to breathe and sleep. And then immediately when I laid down, couldn't breathe out of my left nostril. I was so frustrated and I couldn't figure out what was going on. And I was very thirsty all day and I had really dry lips which my lips get really dry when I get dehydrated, like when I'm drinking alcohol or just haven't had a lot of fluid that day. So that was another kind of symptom for me. And then that night I had a wave of nausea and food started tasting really, really good. I remember actually that night we went to Texas Roadhouse and I got what I usually get, which is like a little filet of salmon, like the five ounce with mashed potatoes and a Caesar salad. And I was like, I was already kind of full because I had eaten like some rolls with the cinnamon butter and I had my salmon and I had some mashed potatoes and I sat down and I was like still hungry because I had a little bit of an appetite increase and I started eating my Caesar salad and my brother was on the phone with Elijah talking about getting on to play games and I was like mmm I love Caesar salad this tastes so good right now and my brother was like shut up what are you talking about and I also remember making a lot of late night chicken quesadillas like buffalo style chicken quesadilla lunch meat with the cheese so good I remember making that like in the days prior to this at late late at night like having that craving for buffalo chicken quesadilla and I remember telling my brother at 7 DPO, or I think it was 6 DPO, because that night we went to get my computer, my PC, that if I was pregnant, this baby really likes buffalo chicken because all I'd had for my late night snack every night for dinner, or like my late night snack was a buffalo chicken quesadilla. So those are my cravings for some reason. Also, I think I put it in the notes somewhere, but one of the nights I had the most intense craving for a can of Sprite I've ever had in my life. I think it was around six or seven DPO, but I saw the Sprite can in the fridge, like nice and cold. And I thought to myself, I have to have that immediately. <laughs> like I need to drink that right now. And I drank it and it tasted so good. Like it just immediately like cured the craving. And I drank the whole can like immediately. So that was an another sign for me that it was kind of like, uh, this is a little bit out of the ordinary for me. Okay, so July 3rd, I was actually eight DPO. 
and I did test on this day even though I told myself I wasn't going to test that early and I have footage of me getting a negative pregnancy test on the third so I might insert that here but I also have that footage in my two-week wait video that's my vlog so my symptoms were mild fatigue mild dizziness mild nausea mild sore breasts mild cramping mild bloating mild cravings and an appetite increase i was tired i was irritable and in my notes really thirsty waves of nausea food is tasting really good craving odd things <laughs> so like the sprite caesar salad salty stuff oh my gosh all i wanted was salty stuff breasts hurt out of breath breasts have been feeling really full and bigger since maybe four dpo so around when my, the entirety of my breasts start, started hurting rather than just the underneath, I noticed them feeling really full and larger than normal, which was super weird for me because that is definitely not a PMS symptom that I've ever experienced. So I kind of knew at that point, like this is like pointing towards me being pregnant. Like I really think I might be. I had a negative pregnancy test. Oh, this was the night. Had to have a Sprite at 7.20 and it tasted so good. <laughs> <laughs> this was also the day so I was preparing for leaving for a honeymoon the beginning of this week so this day and then the following couple days so in preparation for that I knew I wanted to change my nose jewelry so I actually went to the tattoo shop where I got my memorial tattoo on the third and I had it swapped my I swapped my stud for my hoop and in preparation for that I was cleaning around my nostril piercing so that they could like get in there and change it. And one of my nails had fallen off. So like my regular natural nail was underneath and it was a little bit sharp. And I accidentally scratched the inside of my nostril with that fingernail and it bled a lot more than normal. Like usually sometimes it'll bleed a little bit and then it'll just kind of heal back up and it won't bleed that much. I could not get it to stop. Like I literally went through like four or five tissues trying to get my nose to stop bleeding. So. I know that in early pregnancy you're making more blood volume for the developing pregnancy so I kind of knew like I was tipped off a little bit at that I was like mm, this is this is a little bit suspicious all right the 4th of July was a Monday I would have been 9 DPO on the 4th of July I have my symptoms as mild sore breasts mild bloating mild cravings mild appetite increase and frequent urination my moods are happy calm actually this day i had just got my new computer so i played raft all day with my husband instead of going to watch the fireworks and i remember the night of the third early morning of the fourth i had to get up three times to go pee so that was definitely out of the ordinary for me and definitely noticeable so that's something that i logged here the 5th of july i was 10 dpo also i had a negative pregnancy test on the 4th of july i had a negative pregnancy test on the 5th of july so 10 dpo and actually if i were to go back and look at the 9 and 10 dpo tests i do actually see a line now but they've been way past like the point where you're supposed to read them. I will try to put a picture at the end of this video or somewhere with all of my pregnancy test pro line progressions because I took tests. I ended up taking like 24 or 25 tests in total just to see the line progression. So you can kind of see like the earliest that you can see a line and like it get darker and darker. So you can see that in the line progression and you can see it on especially the 10 DPO test now if I were to go back and look at it. But it wasn't there when I took it and you're supposed to read it I think within like 10 minutes of taking the test. And Elijah and I both agreed that within that 10 minute window, it was definitely negative. The 5th of July, um, my symptoms were mild fatigue, mild sore breasts, mild cramps. So I think the cramping like threw me off a little bit here. It could have been like implantation, like not beginning implantation, but like continuing implantation cramping, mild bloating, mild cravings, a mild appetite increase, and gassy my moods were happy and calm got up in the night to pee three times which i mentioned before sore breasts out of breath and bloated so i did not test on the 6th of july which would have been 11 dpo because i had gotten three negative pregnancy tests before and i was kind of second guessing myself and really doubting like maybe i'm over exaggerating my symptoms 
maybe they're just PMS, maybe it's just gonna be a really bad period because I haven't had one in six or so years. Even though like deep down in my heart, I knew that I was most likely pregnant. Like there was something nagging at me in the back of my mind, like you're definitely pregnant. And my symptoms were mild fatigue, mild sore breasts, moderate cramping, appetite increase, and frequent urination. I was calm and I put in my notes, I feel like I noticed the symptoms less, maybe because I was like not paying as close attention to them and like overanalyzing everything. And I didn't test because I didn't think I was pregnant because I got, I was doubting myself after getting three negative tests. Had now what I think were implantation cramps late, early morning, late at night, early morning, maybe around three in the morning. Remember thinking that they felt like period cramps and that I might need to go put a pad on before falling asleep told Elijah that day I felt like I was going to start my period that day or soon after. I kind of mentioned in the vlog that for me, when I'm about to get my period, I kind of feel a heaviness in my uterus, like along with the bloating. And I remember feeling that like late on the 5th, early on the 6th, and then for the entire day on the 6th. This is the day before I found out I was pregnant, by the way. So I kept thinking, maybe I need to go put a pad on. I'm feeling like the heaviness that I usually feel, the cramping, the bloating. Um, different things like that. So I found it a little odd and like with the second guessing that I was ha having from the prior three negative tests, I was really thinking that I was just gonna start my period. And we actually went to Walmart that day to get an oil change in preparation for driving to Florida. So the third, I got my, ne my nose piercing changed. The fourth, I think I got a haircut. The fifth, I did something else. The sixth, I got my nails done. And then the seventh, I got a lash lift. <laughs> so. All those things were all happening like in sequential order. The 4th was the 4th of July, which is why I didn't have anything done. I think the 5th is when I got my hair cut. So yeah, the morning of July 7th, it counts this as pregnancy being four weeks, but that's not the case. I was 12 DPO and I seriously thought that I was not pregnant because of all the self-doubt that I'd gone through. I had gone an entire day thinking that I definitely was not pregnant. I was just gonna start my period, but I decided to test anyway because we were leaving on our honeymoon the next day on the 8th and I didn't want to like have to bring all the testing stuff with me if I like didn't need to. I went ahead and I took an early test just to be 100% sure that I was not pregnant because I didn't want to like drink or eat anything I was not supposed to if I really was and I just it was too early to tell. I went ahead and I took a test. It was positive of course and I logged my symptoms as mild backache, moderate fatigue, mild headache, mild hot flash, mild nausea, moderate sore breasts, moderate cramping, moderate bloating, moderate cravings, a moderate appetite increase and in frequent urination, which is more than before. Moods, excited, happy, tired. First, big fat positive, 12 DPO. Cravings, increased appetite, out of breath, sore breasts, tired, and a back backache. Also, for some reason, on 12DPO, I noted that my body wash, which I use all the time, the same scent, it smelled like ammonia for some reason. So things started smelling weird on 12DPO. Okay, don't mind the camera location change. My battery died, but I only have two more days to go through with you guys. So I already went over that I got a pregnancy test, a positive pregnancy test on the 7th. I went over my symptoms. Next day was the 8th, which on this day, we got up really early and we left for Florida so that we could stay the night there and then board the cruise ship the next morning on the 9th. So I listed my symptoms as moderate fatigue, mild hot flash, moderate sore breasts, moderate cramping, moderate bloating, mild cravings, appetite increased, which was moderate, and also moderate frequent urination. <laughs> so I remember on this day driving to Florida was absolutely agonizing because I kept having to pee so often. I was craving a lot of like acidic, salty foods, Caesar salad, pickles, just different saltier foods, like meat, a lot of protein, eggs, things like that. I also remember my boobs being really sore this day and I was so exhausted, not only from having to get up early, but like also from the pregnancy fatigue that I could not keep my eyes open the entire time we were in the car. We were in the car for like 15 hours and I slept a good majority of those 15 hours in the car. Mood was happy. Notes, lots of sneezing and congestion, itchy nose and throat. I remember in the days following leaving for the cruise, my allergies and my congestion got so bad. I literally, my nose and throat were so itchy. I wanted to quite literally reach down my throat and scratch because it was so itchy and so irritating. Bloated. Left for our honeymoon at 6.30 a.m. this day. Drove 15 hours to Fort Lauderdale 
so tired I could barely hold my eyes open all day craving acidic things and protein Caesar salad lemon pickles olives chicken and sweets so thirsty sharp pains in my left breast sneezing and congestion lots of mucus buildup out of breath craving everything very noticeable increase in appetite very tired and napping a lot and then finally this would be 14 DPO day of my missed period on the 9th so July 9th I listed my symptoms as severe fatigue sore breasts which was moderate mild cramping moderate bloating moderate constipation severe cravings moderate appetite increase and moderate frequent urination moods were excited and tired notes lots of sneezing and congestion itchy nose and throat bloated constipated first day on the cruise ship was a little bit nauseous in the morning but had chicken nuggets and was fine <laughs> we ended up going to this mcdonald's like just down the road from the port and they weren't serving breakfast at the time for some reason so i just got chicken and nuggets and then I ate those and I was fine. <laughs> I wasn't nauseous anymore. Uh, really excited to get on the ship, explore the ship this day. That's the end of my two week symptoms and those are the symptoms that I will be looking out for next month and the following months if we don't end up getting pregnant again this next month. Those are the symptoms I'm going to be on the lookout for and then I'm going to be logging once again in the app and also vlogging. So look out for new two week wait video and think different vlog style videos from me and from my channel there will be a new playlist up on my channel um i also logged like the entirety of my symptoms on the cruise ship on the honeymoon and then a little bit after and some of those were a little bit weird too but i originally what i wanted to do was like a first trimester recap type video about my symptoms and different things like that i might still do that but it will be a separate video from this because i want this to be concise and about one thing so look out for those other videos on my channel when they do come out and please like this video if you enjoyed it comment on your two week weight symptoms if these are a little bit odd for you or if you experienced the same things that i did if you are trying to conceive i wish you all the luck lots of baby dust hopefully some come, will come our way as well since we we're trying for a rainbow at this point um check out my other playlist um check out my first pregnancy playlist if you're interested and some of my other content like and subscribe and i will catch you on the next one bye